Frazier is so ugly, his face should be donated to the Bureau of Wildlife. Muhammad Ali, I would box him and I would arm wrestle him and see if I could beat him. What else? I don't um You were an arm wrestler? Yes. I'm the greatest fighter of all time. Just stop Joe Frazier. Now I'm going to whoop George Foreman again. You want to fight George Foreman? I'm going to whoop them all. You recognize me, man? Yeah. What's, who am I? Muhammad Ali. All right, what's happening? Give me a shake. Give me five. I would give you 30, but your face is too dirty. <laughs> Are you shocked? No. Why are you not shocked? You're not surprised? You scared me when you came out. I scared you. Uh -huh. I heard you said you want to arm wrestle. Yeah. Let's get the on. Go. I'm leaving. That's enough. That's enough. Bye. 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 中国兄弟看到这个拳击比赛，我是将来的拳击，呃，世界拳王了。And you're right. Did you believe that you won this fight? Of course, I do believe that I won the fight. Based on what? Based on what? Base, base. That you were out partying in Vegas. Is that, in fact, the case? This is not true. This is not true at all. Um, one day I went out one day because you know sometimes you train, you just went crazy, went bored, and I went to a strip club because. And I gave him a uh, dance for a lap dance, but um, you gave her a lap dance. Yeah, that's just what I do. Manny, he said yes, he's gonna fight you. I know. Two guys at the gym told me. Champ, we've been through this. That was a Foot Locker commercial. Remember? Yes. He said yes. So he didn't say yes. No, not then. But now he did. He said yes. Mm hmm. But champ, this is also a Foot Locker commercial. They're getting in new gear for the weekend. So it's not happening. No, it is. He's going to fight me. Yeah. He said yes. Yes, he's going to fight me. Oh. I'm so confused. What message did you just send? I'm the student heavyweight champion of the world. Who next? I'm the best heavyweight champion of the world. I'm half WPC with me. I'm undefeated champion. Undisputed champion. I want who next? What do you have to say about a rematch with Vladimir Klitschko? We knock him out. We knock him out. Well, 21st place. We want Vladimir. I want to thank the state governor of Aquarius said, the excellency, Goswin Akpabio. He's the one that sponsored me for the camp. The best governor ever I've seen. He loved boxing. He loved boxing and he brought me very well. I have this opportunity to Sam, say hi to my president. Sam, 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 I didn't understand the answer. I'm not sure what he said about whether he would fight Vladimir Klitschko next. He's young. He's handsome. They know it. He's a poet, a prophet, and many people believe he'll be the next heavyweight champion of the world. Cassius, can I ask you how you're feeling now at this point in your I'm training? feeling great. I'm ready to go to war right now. Well, when you say you're ready to go to war right if now... If I see that bear on the street, I'll beat him before the fight. You'd actually take him on before the fight? Beat him like I'm his daddy. I saw Sonny listen a few days ago, Cassius. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> Each... He's too ugly to be the world champ. The world champ should be pretty like me. Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sunday. Oh, uh, may I ask you because this? Because I'll never lose a fight. It's impossible. Tell it. It's impossible. Never lost a fight in your life. That's any of my fans win when the last time they lost. I'm too fast. Champion from I'm the, the crib. I'm the king. Go to town. Go to champ from the crib. Ah! That, hey, that black guy, he hits hard. Kevin Kelly's here tonight, and he's seen, he's seen the skill of the prince and the strength and the ability and the accuracy and the speed. Oh gosh, you know I'm the best in the world. Have you got a message for Kevin Kelly? He's sitting about seven rows back. He doesn't want to steal your thunder by coming up here and sharing the interview. You got a message for him, he's listening. No, no, he does want to come up here, here he is. Here is Kevin Kelly, have a sit down, Kevin, here you are. Let's have a chat, let's have a chat. Now then, what, what, what have you got to say to him now? Can I just say, he's right here in front of me and I can honestly tell him that I'm gonna knock him spark out. I'm gonna knock your spark out. What are you gonna say to that, relax, Kevin? Relax, relax, baby. You relax. You gonna get knocked out? Let me tell you. In your hometown. Nah, you had a great performance. At New you're nice, York. You're nice and hyped. Madison excited, Square Garden. But I'm the real I deal. I can't wait to beat you up. I'm the real deal. 
I I'm can't looking wait. to your face, can I tell you the face? Go on, go on, go on. Look I'm at going me to smoke your boot. You no, know, I said some things upset a few people. You know, I said this fight's gonna be as one-sided as a gang rape. Chris, you took a knee, seemed to be aware of what was going on and collect yourself. What were you thinking at that moment? Shit. Do you see the two of you getting back in the ring and doing that again? Hey, you know what? Right now, the fans, you want it? Do you want it? If they want it, I want it. My manager want it. Fuck it, let's do it again. He bops right. He weaves left. There must be some way to do this. But there's the way. The whole situation finally came to a head when Clay approached Liston at the Desert Inn in Las Vegas, where the champ was shooting craps and losing. Liston was in no mood to be harangued by the mouth from the south. Drawing a gun, Sonny fired, frightening his young tormentor into a hasty retreat. The gun was filled with blanks. I'm ready for it, uh, so I'm just waiting for the call from Frank. But ugly kid, I'm ready to knock him out. The uh, fans want it, uh, so it's only right for him to get knocked out. I've told everyone before, it'll be a, a Groves win. Um, whether it comes by a knockout or points, I don't really care. Um, he knows that I've got his number. I just want them to sign the contract. Sign the contract and let's do this, ugly boy. I'm coming for you, you're next. I think he's going to struggle to sleep during the preparations for this fight because he's going to have me on his brain all the time. And if he don't, then he's foolish. Don't matter what he thinks. I know I'm going to knock him out of him four rounds when it happens. So bring it on, ugly boy. Bring it on, you ugly boy. Bring it on. Everything I need, I've got. And I don't need that much to beat James anyway. Four rounds. Come to fight me, though. I want him to come and fight me. Fight me. Get knocked out. I sacrificed so much of my life. Can I at least get laid? You know what I mean? I've been robbed of most of my money. Can I at least get a blowjob? He scared the hell out of me, but it brought the fucking best out of me. Yeah. Can you say fucking Not word? really. I would love to fight Tyson Fury over here or in Vegas or anywhere that big pussy wants to fight. Hey, man, I'm going to go home and break my wife's hip. I ain't had sex with her in a while. She's going to feel the pain. And the pleasure. I mean, oh. It's going to be some pleasure mixed in there, but she might be crippled in the morning. So um, if anybody out there want to donate a wheelchair to the right, Save okay. the Miss Thompsons. Okay. All right, she'll fun. be. <laughs> Listen, well done. Congratulations. Tale of the tape for Lissanola Ladwaba against Manny Pacay, uh, Pacquiao. I'll get it right. Well, you've clearly enjoyed being in the UK. David Hay, David Price, any other Brits on your radar? Who do you fancy? I'll just put it like this. Fee, fi, fum, fum. I'm the man with the right hand bomb. Tyson Fury. Oh, well, where? Oh, where can he be? For he's the next man that I want to see. Sheffield, England. Do you agree? Nice. Big right hand from Price. <laughs> <laughs> if he fancies it. Let me see you close your mouth and just keep it closed. Well, you know that's impossible. No, no, no. Keep it closed. You know that's impossible. Well, I'm the greatest. And I'm knocking out all bones. And if you get too small, I'll knock you out. And now I'm going up against a midget. <laughs> He's got a nerve to call somebody a midget. You're just a freak. That's all that's wrong with you. That's right, well, you a freak, fella. Yeah, you a freak. You better believe it. I'm going to tell you, when I step in the ring, I'm going to become a giant. And not only boxing, but the world would be better off if every division had a Manny Pacquiao. We'd have uh, peace in the Middle East, and uh, global warming would cool off. He could make the PGA Tour watchable for me. And by the way, I'll give you 50 for the hat. <laughs> 50 what? Not sure. <laughs> oh I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broken. What, por a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. Thank you for that reception. I'm sure the crowd would like to agree with me, but if he dances like that in Dancing with the Stars, he's fucking no chance, does he? Look at that! It's nice to come back, see my friends, see my family. Floyd, will you stop touching me dick, you puff? <laughs> You're talking about me ass all week, kicking me ass, whooping me ass. I think it's, I think it's something wrong with, you know. My son, my six-year-old son, I've missed uh, for a week, but I probably haven't missed him quite as much as you would probably think because I've had the fortunate to spend the full week with another fucking six-year-old. <coughs> I think he's trying to get up my under my skin this week and worry me and look in my eyes and see a little bit of fear. I only have, I only have one, one message. 
you're pissing into the wind zone. I ain't scared of you. <laughs> Floyd's gonna run away all night. He says he isn't, but he is. He's gonna run away all night, and I know I'm gonna have to be fast on my feet to catch him. So I've got two wonderful sparring partners coming in, Forrest Gump and Carl Lewis. <coughs> What broke him down? Was it just Constantly the body punches. When I was, I was hitting him with body punches, I heard him, actually, he was crying in there, making woman gestures, like, oh, 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 I can't How, find you, him, but I knew that he was breaking down soon. You're saying that Biggs was crying when yes, you were hit him? Yes. In Hamburg, uh -huh. but Kevin Keegan, I think, was pretty successful. Oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> Absolutely, let's first, see it again. Yeah, oh. The first one, pretty good. Pretty confident. We've seen. Oh, oh, okay. oh it's Dear plum, isn't me. it? It is plum. First knockout. <laughs> First before the fight, they had an interview, <laughs> and uh, in the interview, they were both. <laughs> My name is Muhammad Ali. I am the champion. I am the greatest. I will win, but I can't lose. And I'm always here to prove I am the greatest. Now, what you gonna say about that? You know that fight that you had about that, with that white man with the mustache and you knocked him down at the Chuck end? Chuck Rubner, yeah. Yeah, I think that. And you were fighting with him in, before they had an interview. And you were fighting with him before the thing happened. And you said to him, no, he said to you, I'm gonna mess up your pretty face. That's what he said. Right. And then In my said, pretty face and I messed up the way. And then you said, when you get into What are you afraid of? When I, what did I say? When you get into what? You said, when you get into that ring, you're going to be asking yourself, why are you why here? Why are you here? How did I get into trouble? All those people looking at me at the other side would put fear in the man. Right. Well, I think that what sometimes you, you have to have confidence because what are you telling me i have too much no i think it's some sometimes you do use and you say that like say i am going to beat him you know but it's better than saying oh i think i'm gonna lose but i i do beat him right <laughs> Listen to him. Been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, pleasure to you too, mate. How you doing? We can, all, can all, we can all pull about a little bit. Do you want to pull about, have a little pull and a push? Hey, what are you seeing from what you did tonight? No, I did good. What, how, was it easier than you thought it was going to be? Yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah. You're sitting back there, you're getting ready to make your pro debut in front of your home fans. How nerve-wracking is it not knowing exactly when you're going to fight and when you're going to come up? Uh, I just, I just come out here and do my thing. How busy would you like to stay to be? Huh? How busy would you like to be this year? Busy. Thanks, Arturo. Fields is, uh, well, I think next to useless personally, but that's my own personal opinion. You know, he's uh, not only incredibly annoying, but he does pick up the odd win now and then. Sadly. You know, Dustin. Yeah. That's six words. Oh, he's gone. Oh, we might not see him much more here either. Fucker was too fast. <laughs> but it wasn't so much about it, was just that he was so fucking fast, man. Fast, fast, fast. Amazingly fast. Fucking amazingly fast. Uh, I was like, I thought Freddie was in there fucking hitting me too. So uh... You are not getting our award because it goes to a British uh, sports personality. But I'll tell you what we will do. I'll tell you what Who's we will do. Who's it gone to? Who's it we... gone to? That fellow named Best? <laughs> He's not as pretty as me. Somebody said he was pretty. Just before we close this interview, give us some idea of what you think uh, is happening with Joe Fraser. When do you think you might fight him again? Well, number one, he's too ugly to be the world heavyweight champion. <laughs> Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier is so ugly, his face should be donated to the Bureau of Wildlife. <laughs> I guess part of the plan is to puncture Floyd Mayweather's eardrums. It's impossible for you to open your mouth without uttering such obscenities when you have women and children in the audience. Don't you have any respect for this? If you don't like the fucking station, change the channel, bitch. If I wish one of your guys had children so I could kick them in their fucking head or stomp on their testicles so you could feel my pain because that's the pain I have waking up every day.
And if Juan Manuel Marquez has shown himself to be a fighter who will go to any length to gain an edge, the conclusion of this day shows just how far. He drinks his own urine. Good evening, gentlemen. You two are big men. We need to get it on. Definitely, you know, I still think I'm a league above, but, you know, if I have to start to step back a league and have to go down and knock him out, then I might have to do that. I think he's going to be bitter about listen, how I treated listen. him in sparring. Maybe that's why he's still get, bitter about that. That's why he wants to do that. that so dance, let's make, that you know, we'll make it happen one day. Like I said, I'm still 140. When I move to 147, I will move up and I will knock Kel Brook out. Now, I've said it in front of everybody there. He gets knocked out right? every time. We'll I'll see. knock him out. We'll, we'll see what happens. Like I said, something... He has, he's going to have his apart. opinion, I'm going to have my opinion. Well, what, you can't hold the shot. shot. You know what, they've kept Audley Harrison we'll quiet here. You can't hold the shot. I don't remember you. Adley, Adley, don't stop me, Adley, don't stop me. I've been down to him, but you've got tired of him. He likes to have a fight. He's, he's not about his chain trainer, smart in his defense. When he gets into it, he likes to have a fight. Have you been in with anyone decent? Have you been in with anyone decent? You turn down Bradley, you turn down Bradley, you turn down Mike Garner, the likes of Mike Garner. I'll fight Bradley, I'll do a unification fight with Bradley when I win my world title. Listen, if he beats Bradley, I fight the winner Bradley and Kelbo. You always say stuff. You said that about Matthew White and you said fight Matthew White and then fight me. I didn't say that. I did not say that. But listen, if I fought you, I would knock you out. It's in the melting pot. We've got to stop it for now. It's over. Got him a lot of shit. Stop talking to me. And Mickey Mantle told the story after one of the games. They were both having a bad series. He said that a fan in the bleachers was yelling at him. And Mickey Mantle went like this. Yo, Mick, we came to see which one of you guys is the best. And Mantle laughed as he told the story and then continued in the fan's voice. And now we're trying to decide which one of you is the worst. That's how I feel about the fight we just saw. Nigel Ben and Chris Eubank, are you watching it with interest? Who do you think will win? And are you looking forward to taking one of them on? I don't care who wins, and I'll fight either one of them. I mean, I'll fight both of them on the same night if you want to be Well, Chris, what do you have to say to the current IBF uh, super middleweight champion? I'm the best. When I, when I see you, I'm going to beat you and your mama's ass. <laughs> now I finally can be home and enjoy it with some Burger King. Here I go, baby! Yeah. Burger King! Yeah. Burger King! Yeah. Yo! And talk to Bob Bear, because he's my man. Don King, kiss my ass! <laughs> I'm good. I beat Polly. I left with his belt and his girl. Adrian, congratulations on winning the title. Polly, come on in. I'm just saying, you lost. I know, I know, I lost. But, but don't, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, don't brag about taking my side piece. Don't brag about taking my side piece, though. That's my side piece. You don't get laid. If you look at the state of his face, there's no way he's lucky the fight was stopped. I was just getting to him, and he was just deteriorating anyway. So I don't know what you're talking about. He was definitely deteriorating. So I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, I'm telling and, you what and, the score is. Huh? I'm not telling. I'm just telling you what the scoring of the officials was. Oh, okay. And let's go for lunch. Yeah, yeah. Yo, bring on his brother too. I'll have his brother for that lunch. That was a hard meal to digest. Didn't he say it? What you mean a dog? You didn't call me a dog. So you can't teach dogs. He dog. said an old dog. No, new tricks. He calls him. you a bear I'm half the time. You. I'm he a told, me, he told me at the camp that you sleep with a teddy bear in your bed. <laughs> now, I don't make these things up, you know. That's what he said. This guy tells me this. Let's I? be friends for one minute just to get him. <laughs> no, come on. Dude, come on. No, come on. No, no, no. This is my good minute. Let's show him. Oh, what? Let's show him. No. <laughs> no. Let's show him. Let's show him. Let's show what is it James where did it all stem from what's the beginning just as an amateur, uh, Skizzy lived in my shadow for half his life. <laughs> uh, feel like a he has. Uh, I've done everything that he couldn't do. Uh, went to the Olympics when the Olympic got money for my country. 
Uh, it stems from there, obviously, he beat me as an amateur. Uh, robbed me. Uh, but he beat but you? He beat me, yeah, he beat me fair and square. Well, not, well, not, sorry, I got that a bit mixed up. Not fair and square, but he beat me on the night. That's it. So it wasn't but fair now, and square? It was not fair and square. But you just said it was fair and square. I got a bit mixed up, my words, son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And is that the first time you got mixed up? I'm sorry, I'm kid. Don't be too close to it, please. Did you beat him because you were better, George? Yeah, of course, Adam. That's why. That's what happens in boxing. Uh, you beat people because you're better than them, and that's what happened that night. I beat him because I was better than him. I didn't get to train with the the A team as it was, the uh, the, the 2008 crew, and uh, I was just Number left one. out in the cold. Yeah, exactly. Number one. After bashing you up, bashing me knocking up, out you're other internationals, you're and gas. Then... Don't get gas, bro. You didn't bash no one up. You didn't bash no one up. Just come on, bro. Stop I being silly. I bashed you up. I beat you. Ugly and then kid, got stop being silly. For it. He... Someone's O. Got to go. Do you think Ugly it's too boys, soon? Oh, it's gonna go. Do you think the fight is too soon, James? For him? Yeah. Maybe yes. What do yes, you think? I'm gonna say how it is. Too soon in, in what sense, Johnny? You, it's do, happening do, now. It's got to happen now. I'm mandatory for the British title. I'm gonna beat him now. I could have beat him when we turn pro. I'll beat him now. I'll beat him in a couple years time. More is gonna be. Who won the fight? You've got no. You've got no chin. This guy's got no chin. Let me say. Listen, as amateur. You've got no chin, Jules, and when I hit you on that chin, you're all gone. Now, listen. Just like listen, you did. Listen, you, how many listen, times did he hit me on the chin as an amateur something. when we sparred? Brother, how many times? We're not, in, we're not no, six, seven years the same. back now. My chin's the same. We're so in the professionals now. So you... Wake up with someone a coffee. Let me tell you something. I forgot what I was going to say now. Mm, sounds right. <laughs> you want to know what I'm going to do? You can't, I'm gonna can't beat do that. You, you but I'm not going to be emotionally involved. I'm not going to throw punches because I want to hurt him because he pulls stupid, long-headed face down. Like Ugly this, kid, you, can't look, do that. you, you, my friend, Ugly you, my boy, friend, you can't you're gonna do look that. like he's gonna look Ugly like a kid, horse falling at Cheltenham come May 21st. Ugly kid, you can't do that. And you can have that one. Listen, this, we even four rounds, I put money on it. If you're a better man, four rounds, he would get knocked out. Look, I'll put your purse on mine. Look four at your rounds. swagger. Look at that tie. Where you get that tie from, you fool? Sit down. What's wrong with you? You mad fool. Sit down, Jono. I'm gonna knock this guy out with a four round. I was there ready to shake his hand. What did he do? He phoned right, up my trainer and said, I can't come down the gym no more, I'm too embarrassed. Bro, I have to leave gym. Face line. Who hates who Look, more? Bare-faced lion. See this? He's got bare-faced lion. You know, Why who hates who more? Lion, because that could boy. emotionally yeah. become involved in the fight. Listen, I'm going to have my ice bag on my head, fit, you ready to go. Bag on the, head on in the, the change room after mate, I knock you out. I'm going to knock this guy out. Ugly boy is gone. Please believe me. Remember, I've told you. This will not go 12 rounds. Remember, I've told you. And you will knock him out. Remember, I've told you this. You heard a lot of Audley Harrison saying, believe me, please, oh, come believe on, me. Come on, what kind it's of comparison exactly is that? Deluded, kind of deluded Olympic look, champion. Look, look, That's what we gas. got here. You've been told to say all this, you moron. You told me to You're say very it. ugly and you're getting knocked out 21st of May. You moron. Boys, look, look, boys, look me in my face and tell me you're going to... Uh, I'm going to knock you out May 21st. Oh, well, wait, uh, call that breath, but... Okay. Max, you know a lot about box, but not as much as I think I know. This That's is Luda Bella's favorite line, folks. No, no, no. You, you know a lot about boxing, you're good for the sport, but before you're so pedantic, take a deep breath. There are a lot of people that have been around the sport for a long, long time. Blah, blah, blah. What are you mad about? Max, Max. Pernell Whitaker? I know Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker is a friend of mine. And I'm no Pernell Whitaker? <laughs> no. Even Pernell Whitaker is sick of you talking about Pernell Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> is this what you're mad about? I'm talking about Pernell Whitaker? Max, take a deep breath. Let your partner speak occasionally. He's got an opinion, too. And apparently you do, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ludabella acting as a consultant here this evening. I, uh, you having fun with him? Absolutely. How could you not have fun with Max? Well, we, might have, we might have to bring you back here later on this summer to see what else you might have to say again. And Max, Max, that time, I promise, I'll be madder at you. Right. I don't know what you're mad about still. <laughs> All right, here. I'm going to be a reaction to David Price and Frank Maloney calling me out that midget, yeah? I'll fight David Price any day of the week. You see, you plumber from Liverpool, it's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. OK, all right. Thanks, thanks, guys. We're we'll live on Channel 5. All right, go on, one more. Also, you're going to need ten plumbers to do you when I've got finish with you. Also, you are getting it, for sure. Call me out. Call, call me any names and you are getting it. And you know your gay lover, Tony Bellew? I'll fight right. him in there. OK, OK. I guarantee you the floor will even be more slower. If you're um, trying to intimidate, intimidate me in any way whatsoever, don't you know that doesn't work? Didn't you try it the first time? So you don't have to come out here and hack the same ignorance you usually hack all the time. We're going to fight any which way it goes. So just accept that and come in and do the best you can. I dare you talk to me like that. You should, you should get up and kneel to me now and I spare you the night of the 28th. <laughs> I'd also say, you come in and you come ready, you understand? 
Because I'm going to come oh. ready. You understand? Okay. Okay, you know that. I don't know you why you talk to me like that when you know I'll kill you for it. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't wait to the 28th. I'm going to make you my girlfriend. Let me tell you something, you. Hey. You know something? I'm not even going to um, dignify that with a hand. So you know why I'm not dignify that with a hand? So because I'm going to bring myself down to your level. There's something you can't buy in that class, and you don't got none of that. You're sweet. I'm going to make sure you kiss me good with those big lips. I may like finding cake more than other people. It's just who I am. I'm going to do my thing, you understand? I ain't going to let you talk. I did the talking tonight. Roy Jones, Pensacola, we talk tonight. The Gulf Coast, Mississippi, all that area, we talk tonight. The best man fight, the best fight in the world, Bell Bell, I talk tonight. Understand what I'm saying? I don't want to hear nothing else. God bless. What are you That's looking right. at? Let's go. Well, Tony, what about if you've been Steve, here? Steve, in all f- honesty, mate, I'm not going to answer your questions. All as you've done is slate me since I've left where I left, so I'll be totally honest, mate. I'm not going to answer your questions. What you said about me after the Stevenson fight was a disgrace. Someone who's known me since I was a kid wearing an amateur vest should have known better than what to come. So don't ask me questions. Don't, and I've got no intentions of answering them. I should have told you when I seen you in Belfast, but I didn't get a chance to get off the radio. So I'm telling you now, don't you ask me a question because you're only going to get an answer you don't like. You cannot call me. You said some things about me on the radio and on your stupid on your, your stupid show about I'm willing to die in the ring. I'll say what I want, Steve, right about boxing. You know why I can? Because I fight. You talk about it and watch it. I do it. I fight. I drag myself off the floor. I get up from knockdowns. I'm the one who fights through cuts, through broken hands, not you. So don't call me personally on your stupid shows and the things you say. I've, I've spoken enough to you. Mark or Colin, whoever's there, I'll happily speak to you. But Buncey, do not go on to me. You should know better, and you know the kind of person I am. I won't put up with it, and I'll tell you when I see you. Well, I was, was going to ask a nice question. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not bothered. If I ever met Muhammad Ali, um, I tell him my sis, I tell him uh, my sister's a real big fan of yours, and we always, uh, and she always, um, she always pretends that she's Muhammad Ali, and she, she really, she really likes him a lot. And, and I tell him, um, <coughs> I tell him I wish he. What you gonna tell me now, boy? Uh. <laughs> you're, you are Muhammad Ali. You wanna meet my sister? I just motherfucker. This is it, John. Fight him. Go and get him. Go on, fight this fucking He's guy! The, the referee sucks! All you work for! The ref sucks! Fight him! Fuck the referee! Come on, Get out there and fight him! Oh, Come on, Tony! 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 What a piece of shit you turned out to be. What a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you got no fucking balls, you pop sucker. Boy, that's a nice way to get on the referee's right side. Then <laughs> released to his corner where his close friend Norman Stone can take the gloves up. Which could occasion another conversation, but no, Stoney's on his good behavior now. <laughs> Maybe he feels John Reese needs to rest now. Fucking jerk off. <laughs> okay, That's our Stoney. Really? He's, he's ordering Stone out of the corner. Harold Letterman, our in-house historian, is saying that this is unprecedented in his view. He does not remember a trainer ever being thrown out of the corner. I'll sue you for every fucking thing you got, you fuck. You take over. Let's get this one. I'm suing him for every fucking thing he's got. Everything. What did I say to him? I didn't say a word to him. He's the worst something wrong here. I don't know what it is, but there's something definitely wrong. Yeah. I never said nothing to that guy. <laughs> win or lose, will you continue fighting? No, I'm planning to retire as soon as I win. And it will not be no lose. Uh, let me tell you something. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. George can't hit what his hands can't see. Now you see me, now you don't. He think he will, but I know he won't. They tell me George is good, but I'm twice as nice. 
and I'm going to stick to his butt like white old rice. That's right. Man, was the greatest of all time. Of all time. All time. And they're all going to bow. Oh, haven't you was bound to do it? Oh, they're all going to bow. All of them go bow. Oh, we the greatest. Greatest ever did. Are we going to get him? The bee going to be floating. It's the state. It's sound. singing all the time. Oh. Is there, is, is there a handshake before you go into training camp? Uh, he, can go, he doesn't need a handshake. He can, he can, I wouldn't shake okay. his hand, actually, because I don't know where it's been, for one. And for two, like he said, he wouldn't shake Vladimir Klitschko's hand, so what gives him the right to shake my hand? There's no handshakes, there's no nothing. I've told you I'm going to knock him out, and that's what I'm going to do. I'll tell, I'll tell you what there is, <laughs> plenty of action. Well, for example, rage against uh, Vander Holyfield worked against you. Well, f*** it. It's a fight, so whatever happens, happens. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Then we could. You got it. Have a nice fight, Mike. F off. I want to prove to them I'm the best in the world. And I want Pancado. I want McQuigan, that girl. And I'm going to knock him out anywhere I fight him. I'm ready to fight for McQuigan anytime, any day, anywhere. Well, I'm ready. This is my national flag. I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of Africa. You know, man? Let me ask you about Barry McGuigan. Is he going to live with the Nelson power? We're very proud of Barry McGuigan in this country. Hey, like I said before, like I said before, McGuigan is good, you know, and he's a fighter. And the way McGuigan fight, there's no way McGuigan can beat me. There's no way McGuigan can go four rounds with me. Because of my power, I got my power, I got experience, I got too, everything too much, more than McGuigan. And I want him, that girl, I call her, I call her girl, because she, 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 she don't want to fight me. She's scared of me. The, she you know who I am and what I can do. Or the, I know, I know the trainers. These trainers don't want to fight me. You know, I took the title from a young man, and uh, any old man who wants to challenge me, hey, I'm okay here. If I can get a word in, I'd say thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Would he have won without your help this evening? He's gonna put him asleep here in a few minutes. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him go. And, I'm, I'm gonna let him go in, in one more round. I'm still. I got him in the cage right now. The, I'm let him out the cage. The plan is to have Aljuri knock Pacquiao out. Yes, but I still got him in the cage. He listens to me very well. I'm gonna let him loose in another round. So. Round ten. Round round ten or eleven. I'm gonna let him go. All right. I just want to finish this with one gesture, Ricardo. Here's what you haven't smoked in a long while. You haven't smoked since you started training. This is your favorite cigarette. We toast you. <laughs> Cam, awesome. Cam, not the decision you wanted. Tell us what happened out there. Uh, I thought I was doing a lot of moving, and I thought I looked amazing. And I thought I won the first round. And I was like, oh, well, he's going to bring some more to the second round. The second round came. I was like, oh, OK. I won that round as well. Cam, keep up the good work. You truly look amazing. Some people say you're the Taylor Swift of boxing. I'm not saying I'm the Taylor Swift of boxing, but I'm not not saying I'm the Taylor Swift of boxing. And then the third round came. I was like, oh, they could have gave him that round. Uh, he did work a little more in the third round. Uh, but I, after the fight, I was like, oh, Cam, freedom beat communism. And then they announced the other corner. Uh, Roja, as they will say in Espanol, which is not ESPN Deportes, but... <laughs> For the bilingual viewers, I feel like they can appreciate that. Cam, what was so tough about Rojo, about Red? Uh, I mean, he's a very experienced fighter. He threw some good body shots, but uh, core game on 100. I do sit-ups, so it didn't really affect me that much. I felt like I outworked him. I felt I looked amazing. I would have given myself that fight if I was a judge. But I would say, hey, Cam, you're so fast. You're working the judges' table, and you're in the ring. Keep up the good work. Well, can I... What can I say for a turnout like that? Absolutely fantastic. I just want you to answer me two questions. Who have you come to see? Floyd? No. Me? Yeah. Who's taking the bells? Yeah. Let's fucking have him. Yeah. There's, there's... Don't point at me. Sorry. <laughs> It's something that. <laughs> See, we cut black folks don't like white folks pointing at But it's all right for you to point at me. But they. But why, 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 why do you say that? I mean, do you mean that? Say what? The, the, you black folks don't no, like white folks. No, I'm joking. You're joking. Hey, that's good. <laughs> <laughs>
Carl, do you want to ask uh, Floyd Mayweather a question? I wanted to ask you, Floyd, if you don't mind, in my last fight, before I, before I knocked out George Groves at Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 fans, I worked a lot on, on power, so I did a lot of swimming and I chopped down a few trees myself. And then I held my feet and then I knocked him out. And I'm not known as a one-punch knockout, man. I want to talk nice to you and talk about fornicating with you and letting you suck my... He is making his professional debut from Shelby, North Carolina, Brian Sutherland. Sutherland. And his opponent making his pro debut, Brian Sutherland from Shelby, North Carolina, in the blue trunks. And Brian Sutherland knows nothing about boxing. Comes to this, he got into boxing because he was a street fighter, and he figured might as well get paid for boxing or for fighting. And uh, you can see the way he's throwing his punches. No form at all. On the inside, Brian Sutherland. Actually, it's Kenny, Kenny Rainford on the inside. With the straight punches. Watch how Brian Sutherland just tries to throw anything that he can. Flailing in his opponent. Rainford won 24 of his 25 amateur bouts in Great Britain. Turned pro with a third round knockout over Aaron Nance last November. He gets the right hand and that stuns. Brian Sutherland is down. And that's it. Referee Chester Como retrieves the mouthpiece, stops the fight. Let the doctor look at him. Well, this, this man had no business, Brian Sutherland had no business in the boxing ring. It was uh, the straight punches from Kenny Rainford. I don't think he realizes he's in the ring no, now. And it's, it's an art. It's so much different than fighting in the street. He's a good street fighter. He says he never lost a fight in the street, but we're talking about boxing. Those are the straight punches. These, these people are trained professionals. Don't try this at home. <laughs> uh, and there is still a little wobbly. Yeah, yeah. well, he should be. And here is what happened. Brian Sutherland didn't even know how to throw a punch. And here's what happens when you get in there with a real professional. The overhand right, that's all she wrote. What Kenny you, what? Rainford right on the inside, the overhand right. Here's another look at it. Set it up with the left hand and then bing, out. Up. Oh, uh, I uh, forgot something, folks. Oh, down he goes. Tonight we had a fight between a great fighter and a very marginal fighter because it was dictated by the WBC. And it turned out that in this fight at least, we brought you junk. You ain't never boxed before. You gotta know boxing in order to see what's happening here. You ever boxed before, you know what I'm talking about. And well, that is not an overstatement. We can disagree, Roy, without having to pull rank. <laughs> Is there any chance of a handshake? Being no chance. It's painful cool. listening oh. to this chump. He's talking about what's he doing. I'm going to get in the ring, take the centre ring and knock me over. Look at the opponents I've fought. From, from winning the world title against Sean Pascal to defending against Jermaine Taylor. That's a guy that was undisputed I'll middleweight champion. I'll just stop champion. there before you go for it. Jeff Lacey. You've, you've seen the opponents I've boxed. You've seen the 11 world title fights back to back at top, top level. And you've seen how I perform and what I do. Mm. I produce the goods. The only guy to beat me in my 33 fight career is Andre Ward. And he, he is. Mikel Kester got beat in his last fight against me, so that's why that one clean. He's so number two pound for pound in the world below Floyd Mayweather. So for me to only lose to a guy who's number two pound for pound, you can imagine how supremely confident I am getting in with someone who's got a glass jaw. Somebody I've knocked confident. out of a big 16 ounce pillar type glove, knocked him out in sparring. I was pulling the shot, it wasn't even a shot, it was half a shot. I know that once I connect on that little glass jaw, the fight's over. But you're going to see it for yourself. On the 23rd of November, Cole, you're it's going to be so. It's going to be so. This is the sense of the pitch in feeling your voice, is going to be so changing. nice when I knock him out. He knows it's coming at all. Like... Look at his glassy eyes. What? His glazed eyes, all worried. I'm going to knock I'm you out. You sound you know for a fact, you look worried. You're getting knocked out. Well, boys, let's save the energy until uh, fight night, November the 23rd in Manchester. Should be a cracker. It's getting a little hairy here. How confident am I going to be? that you can win this fight. Are you talking out of turn? No, I think we're all talking together. I normally don't do interview with women unless I fornicate with them. So you shouldn't talk anymore. Unless you wanna. I'm not gonna argue with you. <laughs> You're not as dumb as you look. <laughs> Thank you.
It's the right hand, and he's been having success with that since the opening bell. Oh, what a knockout! Guys, like I said, I don't play boxing. I do this shit for real. I live this shit. Now, what you want to do? Oh, my God. John, he's talking to John. You ain't talking to me, pal. John. Punk. You've been saying shit, too. Yeah. John, back to the left. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he mad. Oh, he mad. I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. And I would, uh... Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Where did you come from? Where did I come from? I mean, from? Did you just walk in the dark? No, you... I was out there on the streets, and somebody said they want to meet me. And some I just got powers like that. Oh! What? <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see five seconds in the life of a kid he'll never forget mixing it up with the champ. How about that? Are you scared? Yeah. <laughs>